World War I not only marked a massive shift in geopolitical relations, but it also marked a major transformation in terms of planes, trains and automobiles. The First World War gave us um, many innovations in technology. So tanks were used for the very first time, um, aircraft was used in, in a very new way. Aircraft um, was, was evolving before the First World War, but um, military aviation really, really developed a great deal during the course of the First World War. And, and of course, um, linked to that, um, civilians became le legitimate targets for the first time. And I think that is uh, one particular thing that we can certainly see a legacy in future conflicts. Britain's army found ways to make guns even more destructive and taught closer teamwork between soldiers and the crews of guns, tanks and planes. At the beginning of the war, planes were basic, crude and flimsy. In January 1915, Britain was ill-equipped to deal with the new threat of German airships, or Zeppelins, after they began a bombing campaign over the UK. However, by the end of it, aircraft became more sophisticated and included fighters and long-range bombers. But the horror of war didn't just permeate the skies, the sea was also a battleground. A European war meant a world war, and Germany hoped to divert Britain's attention away from the Western Front. On the water, both sides tried to starve their enemies. They sank or seized ships carrying vital food and supplies. A hundred years on, and naval technology has radically transformed. I think naval technology has come on enormously since the First World War. The First World War was characterised by close quarters, gunnery engagements, and now, of course, we're much longer range missile and electronic warfare type engagement. So the technology in, in surface warship design has moved very much into the, the use of sensors to detect the environment a long way from the ship and use missiles and aircraft to engage targets at much greater distance than the, the days of uh, broadside gun engagements during the First World War. There wasn't just a transformation on the sea or in the air, there was also a radical shift in the change of technology seen on the ground. Arguably, the biggest shift in technology came from the immediate battlefield. In August 1914, seven million men marched off to war, but by the end of the year, one million of them would lay dead. With the horror of millions of men losing their lives, by 1917, Britain's army looked increasingly to machines to win the war. Tanks were a revolutionary British invention that crushed barbed wire, crossed trenches and destroyed machine gun posts. By the end of the war, 5,000 had been built. Warfare had already been insteeped in military history, but during World War I, there was a dramatic change in the way it was fought. Trenches had been used prior to the First World War, but it, with the, but it was in the First World War that they became so extensive, and of course that's what we largely associate with the First World War today. Initially, the trenches were planned in much the same way as they had been in previous conflicts, so they weren't really intended to be a long-term solution. So initially they were sort of scrapes in the ground so that men could hunker down and to defend themselves from heavy artillery fire and also small arms fire. But it was once that both sides sort of tried to outmanoeuvre one, one another that it meant that these trenches began to evolve into something that stretched first of all across Europe and then also into a much more complicated network further behind the lines. Gas warfare was an attempt to actually break this deadlock. I think that's often something we don't realise about trench warfare is that we seem to um, associate it with four years of, of the same, basically. But in actual fact, there were constant innovations, there were constant attempts to actually try and break through that stalemate. And poison gas was one of those. The Germans were the first to use poison gas in, in April 1915. And it very much took the British by surprise. It was also something that was received 
received with sort of international disgrace. Even though, in actual fact, as we now know, gas warfare was actually not a particularly fatal weapon. Only 3% of those who were injured by poison gas actually died from it. And there are some arguments to suggest that it's a, a supposedly a humane weapon because it's meant to debilitate men rather than to kill them. It also meant that the British had to act very quickly in trying to find ways to defend themselves against that. And as we can see in our First World War galleries, what we do is we take our visitors through, almost in chronological order, the types of gas masks that we had. 1918 saw the dramatic end of trench warfare as both sides used new tactics and colossal firepower to break the deadlock. At the end of the war, Britain and its empire were triumphant, but much changed by four years of war. The Great War gave rise to new ambitions, rivalries and tensions, and it was clear that, until the next time, World War I had forged a whole new set of technology to fight the enemy across the land, sea and skies.